and welcome to Salesforce's Release Readiness Live for Spring 17. Thanks for joining us, whether you found us in the beginning of your day, the end of it, or anything in between. I'm Mike Torres, and it's great to be here as we take a look at some of the greatest features and developments that Salesforce's Service Cloud has to offer. Now, as a final point before we get into the presentations, we are going to be looking at some of our roadmap items today. So to properly set our expectations there, let's review Salesforce's forward-looking statement slide. Now, if there's anybody who's unfamiliar with this slide, it urges Salesforce customers to remember that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and that any and all purchasing decisions should be made on currently available functionality only. Hi, David Goldstein. I'm the product manager for Live Message. I've been with Salesforce now for about four months, but I'm very excited to be sharing Live Message with the entire Salesforce community. So Live Message is new to Salesforce with the acquisition of Haywire uh, back in September of last year. Um, Live Message was commercially available on the App Exchange previously as Live Text Agent. So even though it's new to Salesforce, it's not actually new to the Salesforce ecosystem. So um, what is Live Message? Well, Live Message unlocks the conversational messaging channel for a contact center. Um, it allows your customers to be able to use the messaging app of their choice. Um, and today we support both SMS and Facebook. Uh, we're going to be adding additional messaging uh, types in the future. Um, and uh, I'll be talking about that more when I show the roadmap. Um, so in addition, Live Message also supports Service Cloud bots. These are simple bots that automate the interaction uh, between a customer and an agent and can collect information. They can also be built declaratively using the Salesforce Process Builder. So there's absolutely no code that needs to be written in order to build them. So as a contact center manager, you might be thinking, OK, that sounds kind of interesting, but what does that actually do for my business? Well, um, our customers have told us that Live Message actually does two things. First of all, uh, it reduces the cost uh, of customer interactions in the contact center. Uh, we found that uh, versus a voice call, a live message interaction is actually 75% uh, less uh, cost. And that's because every live message agent uh, can handle up to seven uh, customer interactions at one time. Uh, at the same time, live message also displaces approximately 15 to 20% of existing call volume. Uh, secondly, live message also increases customer satisfaction. Uh, by giving customers the uh, ability to use their preferred messaging type, uh, we found, or our customers have found, that 29% found a 29% increase in customer satisfaction scores. So um, all those benefits wouldn't mean a whole lot if live message wasn't easy to install, configure, and support. Uh, so we actually offer a full suite of features uh, to enable that. Uh, starting with our support for Omnichannel. Uh, so with our Omnichannel integration, uh, we use that to actually route individual messages to individual agents. Uh, and as Porvi just demonstrated, uh, with Omnichannel Supervisor, contact center managers can use Omnichannel to see exactly what their agents are doing at any given time. Um, I've talked about Service Cloud bots. Uh, Live Message also works with QuickText, uh, which basically uh, allows for agents to uh, send messages into the contact or to customers uh, that are uh, very frequently repeated, uh, speeding up the interaction for an agent. Uh, last but not least, uh, Live Message meets customers uh, where they are in the world. So uh, for the SMS channel, we support 11 countries. And for Facebook, uh, we support uh, users globally. All right, so I'd like to actually uh, get into a demo at this point. Um, in this particular circumstance, uh, I'm going to be showing how a uh, customer of Northern Trails Outfitters can actually uh, interact with the organization by sending a message over Facebook Messenger. Uh, in this particular instance, uh, NTO installed Live Message uh, in order to save costs and also to increase customer satisfaction. Uh, so as a customer, I'm going to start by going to the Northern Trails Outfitters Facebook page and you can see one of the first things that's displayed is the send message button. So as a customer, I'm going to go ahead and click that. And uh, I'm going to type in a message uh, and send that uh, into uh, the NTO Facebook page. Now, uh, in just a second, what you'll see, the live message responds with an automated message uh, as an indication to the customer that an agent will be with them shortly. And at the same time, uh, that it, same conversation is being routed via Omnichannel to the agents that are logged into the contact center or to the agent that's logged in. So uh, as an agent, I can see the name of the Facebook page that this customer contacted. 
I can see the uh, channel or message type that the uh, customer uh, is using. I can see the name of the customer, and I can see a preview of the message. So as an agent, I'll go ahead and accept this. And what you'll see is that uh, live message is going to actually pop a case that was created using live messages. Um, in addition, this case was actually linked with the customer's contact record, and we were able to do that because this customer has a previous relationship with them, and we've stored their Facebook Messenger ID in a social persona object for future reference. All right, so as an agent, I'm gonna reply back and indicate to the customer that I'm looking into his inquiry or her inquiry, and uh, I'm gonna start by looking at the customer's contact record. Uh, so if I scroll down, I can see that this customer uh, has in fact purchased two tents in the past. So I'm gonna clarify which one this customer is referring to. And to do that, I'm actually going to uh, include an image. Uh, so this is the type of interaction that would be very difficult uh, over the phone channel. Um, and it allows the uh, customer to very quickly get a visual representation of what they're talking about uh, and not have to dig up a model number or that sort of thing information that would be very difficult to communicate uh, over the phone. Um, so now that the agent has sent that information as a customer, I'm gonna confirm that that is in fact the one. And now that uh, I've done that, uh, as an agent, I can go back to the case uh, and actually update it uh, to indicate that uh, this person is requiring a new replacement part. Uh, and I'll click update. Um, and I will go ahead and ask the customer if there's anything else that I can help them with. All right, so in this particular instance, uh, we've shown a back and forth inter interaction, uh, but as the agent, I didn't have to uh, go in and make any notes pertaining to the specific part number. Uh, I simply had a conversation. The actual transcript of this conversation is saved to both the case and the contact record, which you can see is, are both linked with this conversation, so that the next person that's looking at this case can understand exactly what, it, what replacement part this person has, has ordered. Uh, as a customer, I'll go ahead and uh, confirm that no, there's nothing else um, that uh, I need. And at that point, uh, as an agent, I can go ahead and end this conversation. Um, so this is a, an example of how uh, a, a customer can contact a business in order to uh, interact with them uh, and engage in a conversation. Uh, but live message also allows customers or allows contact centers to send out notifications and then be able to start a conversation themselves. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my contact record. And for this next demonstration, uh, it's worth noting that NTO also offers uh, hikes of uh, local mountain ranges. Uh, so uh, me as a customer, I've always wanted to hike Half Dome. Uh, it's been on my bucket list for a long time. Uh, so I get in touch with NTO and I ask them to schedule a new uh, hiking appointment for me. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, ask them to schedule that uh, for this Saturday. Uh, we need to start early, so we'll do 5 a.m. And I'll set that as scheduled and I'll go ahead and save this record. Uh, now, in just a second, what you'll see is that uh, a message will actually go out uh, from the contact center uh, as a confirmation that this appointment uh, has been scheduled. As a contact center administrator, you can configure these notifications to go out uh, the day before the appointment, an hour before the appointment, or exactly when the appointment occurs. It's completely up to you, and it utilizes the Salesforce process builder uh, in order to do that. Um, so I've received this notification and let's say a day goes by and I'm getting a little nervous. Uh, I've seen videos of people climbing up the cables and I don't know if that's really for me. So I'm gonna text in and say, sorry, I need to cancel. And uh, what you'll see in a second is that uh, I will receive a message back indicating that uh, my appointment has in fact been canceled, but it did not get routed to an agent. In fact, uh, a service cloud bot actually handled this interaction uh, which frees up uh, contact center agents to do more uh, high profile type tests. Uh, if I refresh this record, uh, you'll also note that uh, this uh, object in Salesforce has been updated uh, and has changed from scheduled to canceled as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sign into Omnichannel. Uh, just give it one second. Um, but as a customer, uh, let's say a day goes by and I'm thinking that 
You know, uh, I actually really like to try and hike Half Dome. Um, you know, I'm gonna overcome my fears and, and just go for it. So I'm gonna text back and uh, you'll notice that I'm just keeping this in the same messaging thread. Uh, I'm not uh, trying to start a new conversation on a new number. I'm texting uh, with NTO exactly like I would with one of my, uh, my friends. So I'll go ahead and um, do that. And uh, this time, instead of it actually getting routed uh, to a, uh, the service cloud bot, it appears in the omni-channel widget. All right, so <coughs> as an agent, I'll go ahead and accept this. And uh, what will happen is, first of all, the agent will be able to see the full transcript of the conversation here. Uh, and be able to get quickly up to speed with the context of the customer's inquiry. And in, in addition, uh, the agent can also see the customer record uh, and be able to take action on that directly. So as an agent, I'll respond back and say, uh, you know, we have uh, additional hikes at 8 a.m. Uh, next week, uh, and that will get delivered to the customer's mobile as well. All right, so in both these uh, demos, we've shown how uh, NTO has automated uh, some of their customer interaction using both SMS and Facebook. Uh, and uh, you know, this is specific to their organization, but uh, what we found is that just about any other organization can get up and running with live message uh, in about a day, uh, being able to enable an existing phone number or uh, an existing Facebook page. All right, so now I'd like to uh, actually switch over to the roadmap slide and uh, talk a little, about, a little bit about where we're going next. So um, as we've just shown, uh, Live Message today works with both SMS and Facebook. Uh, with summer of 2017, we'll be adding Line. Uh, and in winter of 2018, we'll be adding WhatsApp and WeChat. Uh, in addition, we'll also be opening up the Live Message platform for uh, both Einstein and third-party app developers uh, so that they can plug in uh, their AI and uh, NLP technologies uh, to allow for more complex type of bot interactions. Uh, unlike other bot platforms though, uh, Live Message is always gonna give the bot the option of routing a conversation to an agent uh, if the confidence level is not high enough that it feels that it can issue a response. Uh, and with that, Mike, I'm happy to kick it back to you. Excellent. And with that, I'm happy to kick it over to Elna Miller. Elna, we've seen so much good stuff on Live Message. What are our customers saying? Well, lots of great questions. The first one is, can you just describe how it is different from Live Agent? So when would you use one versus the other? Yeah, absolutely. So Live Agent is focused on web chat as well as uh, chat that's integrated to a mobile application uh, that an organization might make available. Uh, live message is, uh, works over the publicly available messaging channels uh, like SMS, uh, Facebook, and all of the additional uh, OTT messaging apps uh, that are out in the marketplace. Great, thank you. Now, what products do you need to have to use live message? What, what, is there an add-on or is it part of a certain, if it's part of Service Cloud? Um, so it is going to be fully integrated into Service Cloud in a future release. Uh, you do need at least uh, one service cloud license in order to install Live Message, uh, and we uh, sell Live Message in buckets of five uh, user licenses at a time. Okay, good, thank you. And contact your account executive if you if you want to know more details about that. Um, so, question from Cheryl: Is the determine in terms of determining the traffic? Is that native iOS mapping app or is it something else that's determining the traffic? That's, this is for mobile field service probably. Is that for, for you? Yeah, I think, okay. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> um, so within our iOS application, we actually use uh, the uh, Apple's SDK for mapping. Um, if, when we do the Android app, we're going to be using the uh, Google Maps. I, I think longer term, we're probably gonna figure out exactly whether we're gonna use Google Maps for the mapping that you saw. That's to show the map, the map screens that I showed you. But what happens is that for each of these appointments, if you have an address there and you want to say, I'd navigate to appointment, we actually give you the choice for the technician to actually launch either Google, app, Google Maps, Waze, or Apple. Uh, so technicians have a choice on which mapping application they would use depending on what they have installed on their phone. Okay. Back to live message. <laughs> is there a a thought about replacing social customer service with this, or are they still? 
Um, so social customer service is great for uh, the more public type posts uh, that can go on um, on like a Facebook wall or Twitter. Uh, live message is more of a real-time inter interaction uh, between a business and uh, a customer. So uh, it depends upon the use case. If your organization is looking to uh, directly interact with customers in real time, uh, then live message is the way to go. All right. And what about support for Hangouts, similar to Facebook? Is that available or coming? Um, it's not on our roadmap today. Uh, if Google does make their API available, that would be something that we'd look into, yes. Okay. Ella, let's give a shout for one final question for any of our presenters, the biggest, boldest letter question that you see left in the queue. <laughs> Anything, it's your time to shine. Anything well, you counts. know, a lot of people have been noticing. Actually, there's one question about, specifically about flow, and then there's a big question <clears throat> kind of relating to all these features being really awesome for service. But it seems that some of them would actually be useful in other apps, like in, even in sales cloud. So can you speak to that? Do you know if some of these features, like with field service and with the, the messaging, if that's something that might be extended to the other clouds or other objects? Uh, so I'm assuming you're talking about the offline flow demo that I gave. The offline flow and also I believe they were asking about the some of the field service features that, that the... Okay. So a lot of the entities that we built, uh, they can be used um, in other type of use cases. Um, so for example, we built a order, uh, you know, where you, I, don't, I don't think we built the order object. Let, let me, we built location objects, we built product consume, product, uh, we're gonna be building product ordering. That can in the future be actually used for other type of use cases, say for example, like B2C retail, for example. So those entities uh, will be available to Salesforce customers. Uh, around Flow, what you saw there was that we didn't build any new metadata for Flow, but what we did was we built a offline engine that's completely native that we're using inside our mobile app. We internally, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make that into an SDK so that other teams could potentially bring offline Flow into their applications. Uh, so I, I hope to see it in other applications, but I think our application, we had the most use for it because a lot of technician field service use cases, they want to step their technicians through a complex business process, right? It's where depending on what the technician does, you might want them to actually declare something else or, or fill out another sort of form. So um, our use case was just kind of the, the greatest in this case, but I think that we hope that what we built will actually be pollinated across Salesforce. I'm guessing that some folks might be wondering about the standard Salesforce One app, if that, if it might be available. Um, that. Yeah, I, I don't have any indication from them that they're interested in putting it in, but I think that if, uh, if there are use cases, definitely get into contact with your account executive and uh, maybe even over in the, in the idea Ideas exchange. exchange yeah. yeah, that would be a great idea, actually, <laughs> uh, to actually explain what you would use uh, Flow there for, especially the offline piece of it. Perfect. Okay. All right, Elna, thank you. And as a reminder, for those of our customers who ask questions who haven't got them answered yet, how are we going to answer those remaining questions? We are going to be reviewing the feed both in Twitter and in the success community in the release readiness group. As long as you use the hashtag Salesforce Live, we'll be able to find your question. And uh, we'll be handing the list of questions to our product managers and they'll be answering them within the next day or so. Thank you for that very special reminder. And that about wraps everything that we had for our Spring 17 presentations on the Thurfs Cloud. So thank you all for joining us. Now we're about to take a quick break and we're gonna return shortly with our Community Cloud team. But before we do, I'd just like to remind everybody at home that if you're looking for any of our Spring 17 content, you can find it all at salesforce.com slash release readiness. Now, as a final request before we take our break, uh, we'd like you to take some time to complete one of the surveys that we've embedded on the page you're using to view this webcast right now. If you can help us out by completing a survey, we'll return the favor by entering you into a drawing to win a Release Readiness Live hoodie. So until next time, this is Mike Toys for Salesforce, wishing you the best in success. <laughs>